Okay, so this is my Nono Modular Lander three row 84 HP case that I received. It was pledged as a Kickstarter project. Um, I looked up my receipt and I pledged, I uh, made my pledge on June 8th of 2017. The initial ship date was expected to be mid-October of 2017 and it arrived on February 21st. So it was about uh, four months late, which is not unusual for Kickstarter projects, certainly not criticizing them for that. Um, but it, it, upon receiving it, my initial uh, feelings about the case is very nice, very well built. The fit is excellent. You don't see um, increasing size gaps anywhere. Everything fits very nice on all the seams. It has these kind of rubberized or plasticized, I guess, um, like plastic dipped or something, um, corners, which feel very rugged and nice. The hinges are very heavy. Um, they feel very, very solid and heavy. The handle is, 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 uh, has a nice spring action to it. Um, it feels very, very good. There's a no-no logo, of course, right here across the front or the side, I guess, depending on how you want to look at that. And then again, right here by the handle, there's another one. Um, one thing you notice there are three screws here and here, and then there are three in the same spot on the back. Those are actually the uh, hex screws that hold the bus boards in place. Um, so there are three bus boards, one for each row, and then they actually come through, but you don't really notice them. I mean, they've been countersunk and they're very, um, very inconspicuous. Additionally, down the side of the case, you'll see there are three pairs of rivets, or um, I shouldn't say rivets, but like hex screws, one here, one here, and one here. Those are what hold the rails in. Those are actually what hold the rails in place to mount the modules. Now, when I first got this and I opened it, I noticed that all six of these were a little bit loose. Not terribly loose, but they were a little bit loose, so it allowed the rails to, to move a little bit. And I kind of thought, oh, that's not good. But then I realized once you start putting the screws in, um, and you, you know, you could, it'll actually pull the rail into place, and then you can just tighten them with a hex key and just go down and tighten all of them, and then you know that the rails aren't going to move. This finish is kind of a, um, I don't even know what you call this. I'm sure it has a name, but. It feels almost like paper. It's very, it's not, it doesn't feel like paint. It feels almost like the thing is covered in paper. Um, but it's, it's obviously, it's more rugged than that. Um, but it, it looks very, very nice. Um, very smooth, very clean, fit finish. Everything looks really good on this. There are rubber feet on the bottom of the case, or at least in this particular configuration, the bottom. And also on the back or the bottom, I don't care, I guess, how you want to consider that. but. So it does have rubber feet on two sides, I guess is what I'm getting to getting at. So <clears throat> to open it, you simply flip it like this so that the note, the handle is away from you and the rubber feet are towards you. And then you pull up on these bottom two latches, let them snap, pull up on the back two latches, let them snap. Then you just grab the whole case and flip it into the upright position and re-snap your hand latches and voila, you have a case. So that's about all there is to it. Now it does have this little protector piece up here. Um, you can certainly patch fine with that on. It doesn't hurt anything, but it, it does kind of create shadows depending on the light where you're at. So that does remove as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off for the sake of the rest of the um, review here. So this is what we have. So we can shut those latches, we can leave them open whenever we want. But now at this point, we've got our rack uh, ready. And as you can see, this one is fully populated with three rows. And there is a cable here that goes, that comes out and that goes into the bus board here. So as I found, this is probably the easiest way to plug it in is right here like this. Um, it kind of sticks off to the side there a little bit, but it doesn't seem to get in the way. You can actually, I did this for the sake of, of showing everything, you can actually take leave this cable connected and close it. So it is not hard to go ahead and flip those out of the way to just close it with that in. It goes right inside if anybody is curious about that. So you don't have to disconnect it. Um, I did for the sake of this uh, this review, just kind of showing the whole thing, how it goes together. But we'll go ahead and put that back in there, snap it back in place, and we're ready to go. Now, 
The next thing, this one came with the power brick. I had read that some of the other models did not. Um, also came with the 10 HP power supply. So I have the power brick right behind here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. Grab the power and plug it in. Now you'll notice right away, it lights up red. It's not even on and it lights up red. So if it, the power is plugged in, you get a light, which is kind of different. Um, if you hit this button, then of course everything lights up and then now you get an actual screen and you see that light turns green and we have the rails down here. Now this is kind of cool because I've always relied on modular grid to tell me what my voltages are. This will actually tell you. Um, so what's funny is modular grid said that I needed, I, I think I had that this particular configuration was like 660 uh, milliamps on the negative rail and I think 1100 on the positive rail. Well, according to the power supply, it's right about one amp on the positive rail, and it's right about, it's just under a half an amp on the negative rail. So um, those numbers are slightly higher, and of course on the five volt rail I've got zero. Um, but that, that is slightly higher than what modular, modular, yeah, excuse me, modular grid claims. Uh, but they are also doing maximum. So I did load it up and get a bunch of things going, you know, and actually do some uh, some sequences and stuff. And you can see that that gauge move. Um, it does, um, you know, fluctuate a little bit as the load increases. So that's actually pretty cool. I do appreciate that they did that for us. Overall, this case is quite nice, but I do have a few criticisms. So you can see here, I removed the um, top section. So I wanted to show this and hopefully the camera can see this, but this here they did and i know this is probably going to be hard to see but they did put like a, a like a carpeting or something in here for like a padding that um helps it uh, you know so that you can put stuff in there and, and it won't get banged up which that's kind of a nice little feature however it's open right here i can just stick my hand underneath the modules um and, and again i know that's hard to see but um, it is, it is open, and then this cable just hangs out that goes straight to the bus board. So I would be hesitant to put anything in there, because keep in mind, this is the side of the handle, so as soon as you pick that up, whatever you put there is gonna slide down and possibly hit your modules, or you know hit the bus board, or even if it's not heavy enough to be dangerous, it could get stuck in there and kind of make a mess. So um, that is a little bit, that's a criticism that I have. I really wish they would have put like a little piece of metal or plastic here to separate that and make it kind of a little compartment. I may do that myself. I may take a trip to the hardware store and try to find something to put across there. Um, that is one thing that I do not like about it because actually, honestly, this is one of the things that I really liked about the case is it has this. So I was like, oh, you can throw some patch cables in there. You can throw your power brick. You can throw, you know, various little gadgets, your mini clock or whatever. That you, that you want to transport, and that'd just be a great way to transport them. You wouldn't need an extra bag. However, I wouldn't pack anything in there um, for fear of it hurting the modules, so I need to do something about that. Um, I do wish that Nono would have, would have fixed that from the factory. However, other than that, I really don't have a lot of criticisms. Um, it, is, it does actually seem like a really solid case. This uh, particular wire, again, I know that this is hard to see, but it goes under here and it just splits. This is just a standard four, uh, four conductor wire, and it just goes to the standard um, four pin, uh, four screw terminal on the um, bus board. And then the same thing with the top section uh, here, I'll put that back on, with the top section coming off the back of the power supply, there is a four, screw terminal and then there's a four screw terminal on the bottom bus board and of course there's a similar wire like this that runs uh, between those then from the bottom board to the top board there is um, simply an, a, a euro rack ribbon cable that connects those together to move the power about between the two boards um, one thing to note the bus boards are not shrouded they are the open pin headers so be very careful I, I, this is the first case I've ever had that has not had shrouded um, headers. So I, I was very careful, you know, as I plugged them in, it's easy to get them either one pin off or, you know, up or down because you don't have that little plastic thing 
uh, to guide you. So um, just be careful when, if you have one of these or if you're getting one of these when you rack everything. Um, luckily for me, I think my rack is fairly mature so where I'm probably not going to be changing things in and out every week or anything. Um, but that would be, you know, a good uh, something for somebody to know if that's what they were curious in doing. Um, so again, we take this, once we put them together, we take this, plug it in right there. And of course then we have, oh, we also need to plug in the power, silly, there and we have power. Um, I also have already pre-run, just because this is my studio, I've pre-run clock there, and I have pre-run audio over here. So for me, it's a very quick setup. I simply just snap everything in and I'm up and running. Um, it is a very nice uh, uh, transportable case. It's not heavy at all, in fact, my old case was a two row case that had a dub for power supply in it. I believe it was heavier than this one. Uh, this is, it's very light, whatever material they, go, they chose to make this out of, it is quite light, um, very transportable. Overall, it's just a really good case. Um, the power supply is excellent. I've had, this seems to be very solid. Uh, I looked at how it was built inside. It, 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 it does look to be very well built um, with buffering and all of that. It, it, it really seems like a, a great design. So overall, um, case is good, ergonomic. I don't have a lot of issues with it. Um, the the do, should mention that the pledge took quite some time to show up, but again, that's fairly normal with Kickstarter. Um, I should uh, I brought up about the um, rails being a little loose, and then this thing really does kind of annoy me. That's really my only gripe with the case, and I think that's something I could fix on my own. Um, but overall, a really great case. I just really think this is um was a good purchase and uh, i'm looking forward to using it a lot one other thing to note the i, I don't know if this is very if this is visible from the camera but if you look across um all of these modules you notice there's a lot of screws missing so there's a screw missing there 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 etc etc <clears throat> most of the of the modules that have four screws only have two in them right now that's not a big deal, everything is mounted solid, but the reason that it's set up like that is because that's all the screws that it came with, and it does not use a standard Eurorack screw. Um, so I found this out and it was kind of upsetting. Um, so it comes with a pack of screws, but it's not enough to rack everything that I have here, obviously. I did add four of my own screws, and uh, the thing is with Eurorack screws, nor I think the normal size of a screw is like it's like six millimeter. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's a six millimeter. Then a long screw is like eight millimeter. Well, this came with a bag of ten millimeter screws, so they're even longer yet. But I had four eight millimeter screws just in my box of screws, and those did work. Um, so you need the either eight or tens. The standard screws will not work. I have tried them on these; they will not work. The the um, rails. The, uh, what do you call it, the um, threaded strip within the rail is, is, is a little further back than most. So that smaller screw will not grab the threads. Maybe it would if you had a really thin module, but it won't grab the threads. So you do need a longer screw. So that is important to know. Um, it did not come with enough screws to fully rack everything here, but everything is solid. And I just bought a bag of screws. Um, it's on the way, and so I'll, I'll finish those up at some point. But um, anyway, overall, those are kind of my gripes is what I just listed. Um, but the pluses certainly outweigh them. Just for fun, let's put it back into travel mode. So the first thing we do, obviously, shut it off, unplug our power, unplug our audio, unplug our clock. I'm just gonna leave this plugged in this time. We put our top section on. Oops, maybe I should, there we go. And we flip, snap those in. Then we unsnap these, pick the top section up, Set it down, drops right in. Well, it should. Oh, I should open the thing, huh? And snap that, snap that, and voila, or the other way, voila, our case is ready for transport.